This is Talking Rackheads. Hi, I'm Nigel from The Art of Sound and this is episode number 12 of Talking Rackheads. Woohoo! <laughs> so we're uh, moving rapidly on and uh, today's episode is going to be a mishmash of more things and ideas and techniques I use in patches. Plus, I'm going to be introducing a, a couple of new modules here and there. And this episode might be a little shorter than normal. It just depends, as I had a few issues with my main Mac this week. I had a memory fault that needed uh, fixing because I was getting some weird behaviours and crashes. But we'll see how it goes and see how much time I've got and how many bits I can put together. So let's get right on and here is the first bit of, well, Mish, I guess. So here is the first patch and of course the first thing to notice is that I am indeed using the latest version of VCV Rack 0.6.1. You can tell that because I've got the new menu here at the top. And uh, also you'll notice that there is a new module here. This is the new clocked module from Impromptu Modular. And this clock really has a lot of very interesting functionality that is all combined together in one module. And some of this functionality you can find on other modules or by using external modules with a clock. And some of it, this is going to be firsts if you like, for a clocked module in VCB Rack. So I'm going to be showing this off quite a bit during the next few uh, parts of this episode. So here it is, straightforward clock module. Here's your BPM. Here's the reset, the run buttons. And then we start getting into the interesting stuff a swing parameter and a pulse width parameter for the main output. And I'll come to these in a little while. Then we have a ratio setting for three additional clocks. So this gives us divisions and multiplications of the main BPM just by rotating the knob. And then we have three additional clock outputs, one for each of these additional multiples or divisions just here and then we have a reset run and bpm output which if you then link to the reset run and bpm input at the top of clocked and a second copy this synchronizes the second copy to the first so now you can have multiple clock modules all linked together giving you as many different clock divisions and clocks as you might wish and in my testing of this I have actually linked together eight of these all together and I haven't noticed any desynchronization or timing issues with the clocks being generated so it's pretty accurate spread across multiple modules okay so in this first patch what I'm going to demonstrate is the delay function here and what the delay function is is it delays the clock being output from one of the three outputs here so this is output number one it delays that by a specific amount that is relative to the clock itself that's being generated now what do i mean by that well when it's set to zero which it is at the moment then the clock being output from here is identical to the BPM clock being output here. But if I change the delay to say one half, then this clock is delayed by 50% of whatever 
this ratio is set to. So it's relative to the division or the multiple. It's not fixed. And if I go to one fourth like this, then this clock is delayed by a quarter of whatever the normal clock speed would be and so on. And there are lots of different divisions you can play with. Triplet divisions, uh, semitone, uh, semi-quaver divisions and so on. Each one has its own use. And what you can do with this is then use these controls to delay clocks relative to the master clock here and produce all sorts of interesting effects. Things like strums where each note being output from each clock is slightly delayed so it sounds like you're strumming a guitar strings playing the first string on the beat and then each string afterwards is slightly delayed giving that strum effect or you could use it for arpeggios for example uh, having different clock delays so you get these rhythmic clocking coming through to each of your sequences or in this case you can just do something very weird with it which is what I'm doing. And what I've actually got here is four sequences playing through four cornrows X's. So I've got four different sounds being played by four different sequences. And each of the sequences, the first one is the standard BPM, the second one is slightly delayed, the third one is slightly delayed, and the fourth one is slightly delayed. And what I'm doing with these delays is delaying when the sequence starts. So each note of each sequence is at a slightly different time to each other sequence. So it gives this very sort of odd kind of rippling effect. And again, like a sort of an arpeggiator, but rhythmic. Um, let me just play it for you and you'll hear what it sounds like. So here is the original first sequence playing on time at 120 BPM. And you'll notice this, these are all just four step sequences. Now here's the second sequence where the clock is being delayed by two thirds. So it's sort of like a triplet delay. And this sequence will play slightly delayed by that amount, so you get this effect. And the third one is being delayed by a quarter. And the fourth one is being delayed by an eighth. Very weird sort of effect, but actually can be quite useful for doing all sorts of different things. So what I'm going to do now is just change a few of the settings and let you hear some of the different ways this same set of delays can sound depending on how you set up the sequences and how you set up the sounds that it's producing.
as I said, some very weird and strange ways of doing things. But I find, you know, it's really interesting, a very creative uh, tool to use in my patches, using just the delays, just to give a different feel to certain sequences. And of course, that was an extreme set of examples. But I hope that if you just play with it a little bit, you'll understand how the delay works and how you can be used just for very subtle effects sometimes. Like, just almost like you could use it as a one-tap delay without any original sound, for example, just by setting up the delay of the clock and then triggering your uh, sequences from that. And again, you can use this not just to trigger sequences, but you could use it to trigger drum sounds or percussion samples or anything else that requires a gate or a trigger, you could use that for this purpose too. And I've discovered you can create really interesting rhythms using delays and swing parameters and a bit of pulse width and get some very curious sort of different style of rhythms that can sort of evolve as time goes by. Okay, let's get on with the next patch. Now, in this next patch, I'm going to demonstrate the swing capability of the new clocked module. Now, this swing capability is based upon the Roger Lin method. And for those that don't know, Roger, uh, Roger Lin um, created really the first proper drum machine in terms of being sequenced and everything else. And so he was responsible for a lot of the implementations used in future versions of drum machines and also of course in the whole Akai range of workstations. And so um, Mark implemented this type of swing uh, in clocked because it can be very useful to create all sorts of different types of fields. Let me give you an example of how that works. So here is a piece of music using two gate sequences driving uh, one of AS's kicks, snares and hi-hats and then another phrase seek 16 driving a bass line made up of a couple of cornrow X's and this is what it sounds like straight. So that's the straight version coming using straight clocks directly from the clock module. And I'm using output number one. So that's this one here. Now, if I change the swing amount to say 50%, just by rotating this knob, now what you're going to get is a rhythmic change to the clock patterns. Instead of being a straight 4-4 four, four beat, what happens is one of the clocks, like the first clock is on the beat, the second clock is delayed slightly by, or, or shortened slightly by 50%. And in this case, because I'm turning to the right, it's going to be delayed by 50% of the clock that's coming from the output here, if it was straight. So... That'll give us a 50% swing um, to the rhythm. And that sounds like this. Now again, this is what it sounded like straight. So a very different feel to the piece just by changing the swing amount. Now I'm going to change the swing in real time so you can hear how it affects the rhythms of the parts being played. So there is the original parts all at straight clocks. Now I'm going to increase the swing and you'll hear how the rhythm changes. And it 
gives that sort of almost reggae type feel to the uh, rhythmic patterns. That's at 33%. That's at 50%. That's at 66%. And that's 75%. Now I'm going to go to the negative side to shorten the swings. probably tell it really does give a different feel to certain parts that sort of triplet skipping effect is very effective especially with percussion parts and bass parts and if you put straight parts over the top of them then it does lend an entirely different feel to things and uh, as some of you may know because of Roger Lynn's work with the Akai stuff um, this is really where hip-hop originally came from a lot of hip-hop beats are based on adding swing to rhythmic or bass parts or both just to give that feel and again as you probably heard uh, also you know reggae feels and that sort of thing and, and just a whole different set of rhythmic textures to a piece simply by changing the swing amount of the clocks okay let's look at another patch Now, for this patch, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use clock divisions to synchronize, for example, chords with a fast moving sequence part. So what I've done here is I've used a phrase seek 16 to play a 10 step sequence pattern. So this is sort of an odd length sequence pattern and it sounds something like this. And what I've actually done is set up four sequences. So this is playing in song mode. And every four times, it changes to a different sequence pattern. Now it will change. And I just did this by setting up four different sequences and then assigning the first sequence to pattern one, two, three and four of a song and the second to five, six, seven, eight and the third to nine, 10, 11, 12 and so on. So there are four sequences being played over 16 patterns in a song. And each sequence is just 10 steps long. Now, I'm also outputting this to one Corn Rosex using the this sound, but I'm also layering it with another Corn Rosex to give a different feel. And this is how sometimes it's a good idea to use two different sounds on one sequence just to get a sort of layered effect to the sound so you get a different texture. So that's the first sound. And now I'll add the second. And that's just the second sound by itself. And together again. So 
So don't limit yourself just one sound when you're sequencing something. Sometimes adding two or three or four sounds together can actually give you the effect you want. And also, if you change the envelopes for each of the sounds, you can get a sort of involving sound over one note that then every note it plays is either slightly different or evolves over the length of the note and so on. Okay, so that's the lead sound. Now, I've also got two Phrase Seeks 32s playing in 2 times 16 mode. So here's the first and here's the second. And what I've done is I've set up a chord. Now, how I did that was I took the first sequence here at the top and inserted the bass note for the first step. Then on the second sequence, I added a fifth. And on the third sequence, I added, for example, a third note. And on the fourth sequence, I added a fourth note to the chord, giving me a four-note chord every time it plays one step. And I've made this sequence just four steps in length. So it's going to be playing four different chords each time it steps through. So that's all well and good. But how do you synchronize the chord to change every 10 steps? Because I want this chord to only change when the sequence has completed all 10 steps. And this is where clock divisions come into play. So here's my sequence playing at 180 BPM. And in order for, to make sure that this sequence changes every 10 st steps, I've got to make sure the clock is divided by 10. So it changes one tenth uh, of the speed of the master clock. And so I set up the ratio for divided by 10. So the clock being output by this output here is playing 10 times slower than the clocks being output from here. And this means that when I do a sequence that's 10 steps long, this bass sequence, the chord sequence here, will change in sync with it every 10 steps. So it sounds something like this. create this sort of brassy chord I use two even VCOs for each sequence so basically sorry one for each sequence two per sequencer and then I fed them through the freak filter a couple of envelopes and then I mixed together a sort of pre-mix using Volt's knobs so all four sounds get mixed into stereo here and then the stereo outputs left and right are fed to the third and the fourth inputs on the console panned hard left and hard right to keep that stereo image so the chords are being spread across or the notes of the chords are being spread across the stereo image now if i add the sequence lines to it you'll hear it all fits together.
course, I could have made these chord sequences much longer and you know, made them 16 different chords or chord combinations and then put them into a song. So the chord was constantly changing uh, compared to the sequence being played by the PS16. Um, that's up to you. I just wanted to keep this simple so you could hear how that effect works. And again, using a 10-step pattern rather than you know what most of us use being 4, 8 or 16, for example, gives a different feel to the sequence. And you don't have to you know, stick to the typical 16 steps or 8 steps that a sequence sequencer typically provides for. You can have you know 10 steps or 14 steps or 7 steps, for example. Uh, and that will give a different feel to the sequence itself because you're changing how often it repeats or loops. And so that can give a different flavor to it. And it can give it a sort of off-kilter effect. Um, and other times it can give it a very looping rhythmic effect, as I think a 10-step sequence typically does. The other thing that I used here was um, AS's BPM Calc um, for the delay. And this is a wonderful little addition to his range with a stereo uh, FX delay system. You just take two outputs and connect them to, sorry, two inputs and connect them to two different outputs from the delay. Feed it the clock of the master, from the master clock of your clock module. And now it automatically calculates the different types of delays that you can get. And all you do is to change the delay type is just move this, for example, down to here would give you an entirely different set of timings for that clock, for the delays. So you can get all sorts of creative rhythmic delays by doing this as well. And not only that, but you can also use these outputs for other things as well. Um, it's not gated out, it's not triggered outputs, but I find that sometimes it's quite interesting to use the voltages from here to do some weird and wonderful things as well. And it's worth experimenting to see what happens. Okay, so that is how you can use a clock division. And just to show you, you know, that's the original clock division. I just dragged this down till I got 12, uh, 10 rather, to give me that exact clock division from here. And if I slow or speed up the BPM, the clock division slows down and speeds up with it as does the delays, so everything stays in time with itself, like this. Sometimes you have to hit reset just to synchronize everything together, but it still works at any sort of level. And this is very useful when you want to synchronize the sequence and parts of it you've done to another sequence or an external device or something because you can speed up and slow down and yet everything stays connected together so that you know that everything's playing in time with everything else. Okay. On to the next. Now for this patch, I'm doing something a little different. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm using two BPM LFOs from Frozen Wastelands. Now, I love these because what they are is clockable LFOs. That means that you feed them a clock and the speed of the clock determines how fast the cycle of the LFO is. But I'm doing something a little different with it today. What I'm doing is I'm feeding it irregular clocks. And in fact, these clocks are being triggered by the outputs from a Turing machine. So, for example, this output here is triggering not only the envelope, but it's also triggering, if you notice here, it's triggering 
the clock speed. So whenever this sends a clock, then, or rather a gate, this also creates a trigger, which means that the speed of the LFO keeps changing. If you watch the LFO here, you'll see sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast. Now, what I'm using the LFO to control is the waveform shape here in, in one of Blamsoft's excellent XFX wave modules. So you can see here the waveform is changing in time with the LFO. So you're getting a sort of rhythmic wave change uh, being generated by this BPM. And this BPM LFO is doing two jobs. It's doing the same thing as the first one. It's changing the LFO, the waveform shape in another X of X wave. But also, if you notice, I'm using it to connect to the FM. And what the FM is doing is adding a little bit of vibrato or wobble, if you like. And again, I'm using a clock from the Turing machine here to determine the irregular or regular speed of the BPM LFO. Then I'm also using two other gates here and here to trigger the envelopes at different times. So when this gate is triggered, this envelope fires, and when this gate is triggered, this envelope fires, and the outputs from here are going to a stereo pair in the console rack, which is off screen, but that allows me to create a sort of ping pongish left and right stereo image from this waveform. So let's have a listen to each one of them working. Here's the top voice only. that sort of it's like a filter opening and closing sort of effect and what that really is is just the waveform shape changing from a sawtooth to a pulse sort of a pulse now if we listen to the second voice this is the upper part And if you're listening to this on a pair of headphones or good speakers, you'll hear that each note is playing at different sides of the stereo image. And the waveform is being modulated as well, so you're getting a more textured wave sound. And there's also that little bit of vibrato going on. If I increase the FM, you'll hear more of it. And it gives a sort of slightly out of tune effect, which I quite like. And again, that's being controlled by the BPM LFO, one of its outputs. So now if I put the two parts together, this is what you hear. So there are, just another little technique that I use in a lot of patches um, to create different tonal qualities and, and effects using the waveform shapes and modulating them and also modulating the FM and doing it in a way that's not a regular cyclic thing 
but actually happening in a sort of rhythmic pattern. Okay, let's get on with the next one. Now, in this segment, I want to take a basic look at clock divisions and clock multiples, so you get a good idea of how they all work. And what I've done here is I've set up, uh, in this first part, a single sequence that is playing at a speed of 120 BPM. And this is the ratio, the clock, malt or division. And it's controlled by this knob in the clocked module. And when it says X1, that means it's playing at one times the uh, BPM that's set here. So in other words, it's playing at 120 BPM. And what I've done is I've also taken an output here, which I'm sending to a kick drum. So you can hear the kick drum that will constantly play at the set BPM. And then you'll hear the difference between the clock and the sequence that's playing from this SMS 16 sequencer. So let's just listen to the two playing at the same speed. So there you can hear, each time the bass drum plays, the sequencer advances by one step. Because they're both playing at the same clock speed. Now, if I multiply the clock speed, say for example I change it to two times the speed, then for every one bass drum beat, the sequence will step forward two steps, not one, because the clock is going to be twice the speed. So that's two times the speed. Now at three times, we'll get three sequencer steps for every one bass drum beat, which is what we call a triplet type pattern. And at four, it's now four times the speed of the bass drum. So for every bass drum beat, the sequencer moves forward four steps. And so on. Five, six, seven, eight. And in fact, this can go up really high amounts to almost the audio range of 64, where it's just playing the sequence so fast that it all becomes a blur of one note. Now, if we slow down the sequence, in other words, we do change the ratio to the opposite division, then if I go down to times two, sorry, divide by two, then the sequence now plays one note every two bass drum hits. And now it plays every three. And now every four. So that's basically how multipliers and divisions of clocks work. You can set up a basic BPM here and then have the output clocks, in this case from the clock module, each one can have a different division so they play at different speeds. And there are other settings as well, like for example, 1.5, which is one and a half steps every one beat. Which is a sort of syncopated feel to it. And again, you could, instead of dividing it, you can multiply it by one and a half. And now we're back to one to one ratio. So that's the basic idea of how clock dividers and multipliers work. And what I've done here is I've set up three sequencers 
So there's three different patterns and they're running at three different clock ratios. The first one's playing at one times the BPM. The second one's playing at twice the BPM. And the third one is playing at four times slower than the BPM. So what you'll get is this sequence will play twice the speed of this one. And this one will play four times slower than the speed of this one. And eight times slower than the speed of this one. Because this is twice the speed and this is four times as slow. So that gives you eight an eight difference, if you like, between the speeds. So let's listen to each part and then we'll put them together. So this was the original part at the original speed. And I've left the bass drum in so you can hear it. Now here's the second part running at twice the speed. Here's the third part running four times slower than the BT BPM. And I've added some echo to the last two, this one and the previous one, just to give it a bit more of a rhythmic feel. But if I turn that echo off, there, you can hear it playing one note every four bass drum beats. I'll turn the delay back on again. Now if I play that part with the second part, the second part is playing eight notes for every one bass note. Now I'll turn on the first voice. So now you have three parts all playing at different clock speeds and fitting together. Now, in addition to the clock divisions and multiples, because clocked has these functionalities, now I'm going to add some swing to that first voice. And remember that first voice is playing every step according to what the bass drum play, because they're both running at the same speed. But if I add 50% of swing, that's going to change the rhythmic pattern of the first sequence to sound something like this. And if I change the swing pattern of the second voice, you'll hear a difference too. And if I turn off the delay, Reset the swing for the first part, you'll hear the swing on the second part, but not on the first. And this swing on the second part is currently set at 50%. Let's change it to 33. Now notice, it's playing triplets in a sense, but it is still staying in time with the other sequences. And this is one of the great things about swing. You can add these sort of like triplet type feels or, or little frills and things to the sound 
but they still stay in time with the sequences. And that's not still straight, that's at 10%. And it just adds a slightly different feel. Now that's straight. Now if I increase it to say 66. And back down to 50. Back down to 33. And now back down to zero. And now I'll change the, the swing of the first voice. And I'll add the echo back to the second voice. Now change the swing of the first voice to 50%. And there's no echo on the first voice at all, notice. So this is just giving that feel. And now 66, which is a sort of another type of two times triplet feel. Now I'll put them both straight and I'll increase the swing on the master BPM for the bass drum. So now the bass drum and the first two voices are all playing with a 33% swing. And again, a totally different feel to that original pattern which sounded like this. So there you go. That's how using uh, basic clock divisions and swing to give all sorts of different rhythmic feels to your sequences, drum patterns and so on. And these two controls together really do allow you to create all sorts of different combinations of feels um, and sort of like anticipatory rhythms, all sorts of little odd things you can add together to get some really cool and interesting effects in your patches. Okay, what's next? So in this patch, well, I was asked by someone a little while ago if I could do something that had a, I don't know, a kind of feel of the score to Interstellar by Hans Zimmer. And I thought, well, no. <laughs> but, hey, there are certain things you can do with VCB Rack that can give you that sort of organ feel, those sort of like deep notes and fast running notes in one hand, deep notes on the pedals and chords and things. And you can do a sort of, I don't know, sort of like a facsimile of that sort of thing. So that's what this patch is doing. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a whole bunch of corn row X's in wavetable mode, and I've chosen wavetable sounds that have an organ -y type of feel to them. And then what I've done is used uh, various copies of the uh, PS32. This one's playing sort of chordal stuff. This one's playing a bass note. And then these two are playing fast sort of like 
uh, triplet type runs with the hands like arpeggiators but in triplet style I'm doing them in triplets using the swing command in clock set to 33% so these two uh, clocks here which are running to this sequence and this sequence and this one's running at half the speed of this one and they're both running at uh, f uh, sorry, 8 times and 16 times the speed of the chord changes gives that sort of feel of an organ player going crazy on a dual keyboard and foot pedal type organ. Well, sort of. Anyway, uh, this patch will be part of the patch collection. So have a play with it yourself and see how I get on. But this is what it sounds like. Sort of, sort of like that sort of feel. But play with the patch and, and create your own stuff and just have a go with it. And it's quite a lot of fun. And, and you can do some interesting sort of like, again, sort of like organy type stuff. Um, quite simply, quite easily in VCP Rack. So that's it for another episode of Talking Rackheads. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you found it was interesting. And uh, in two weeks' time, I'm hoping, and no promises here, but I'm hoping that the next episode will be a second in the series of a sort of utilities special, where I'll be looking at all types of little utility apps, that I did, sorry, modules that I did uh, about six weeks ago, and I'm going to do a second part to that. And then I'm going to finish off this series um, of episodes relating to building a patch because I'll be using a lot of those utilities in the big patch that I'm going to build from scratch sort of live for an episode of Talking Rackheads in about four weeks time. Anyway as I said hope you enjoyed it please leave any questions or comments or critiques whatever you got in the comments below and as always they're much much appreciated. So thanks guys and uh, I'll see you in two weeks' time. But before then, well, uh, there's a little story to tell you. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, um, I wasn't sure how long this episode was going to be because I had an issue with a memory fault. And because of that memory fault, I had to remove 16 gigs of RAM from this iMac that I use. And... This is the spec of the iMac that I use to record all the videos for Talking Rackheads. And people ask me, you know, how do I create these big patches and record them and not get any glitches? Well, the truth is you've got to have a fairly beefy computer in the first place. And so I've got, in this case, a 2015 uh, Retina iMac with a 4 gig Intel Core 7. Um, and 32 gigs of RAM with the AMD Radeon R9 with four, um, four uh, gigs of RAM on board. And that all seems to help. But the reason why I'm showing this and telling you this is that when I had to remove 16 gigs of RAM because I had a glitch, then certain patches that ran very smoothly before started to glitch quite badly especially when I was trying to record and you know people say you know 
why do you get glitching and all this sort of thing and how can we improve it well i learned and maybe this only applies to you know iMacs and mac os i don't know but certainly adding more memory makes a substantial difference um i don't know exactly how much of a difference but i can say that it's got to be around about 10 to 15 percent in terms of performance just going from 16 gigs back to 32 gigs of ram my system improved in performance quite substantially especially when i was recording and doing all that sort of stuff for tr um, a patch such as this one which is definitely a um, an sbp a stupidly big patch um, wouldn't work wouldn't run properly when i was trying to record it it just glitched out all over the place stick back in the missing 16 gigs of ram once it was fixed and i got rid of the memory fault and hey presto this one runs without an issue at the same buffer setting which i have set to 256 so yeah maybe that's one of the things that helps with the performance of vcv rack is the more memory you have the more workspace there is for the computer to use and so the better the performance and again i don't know if that's true across all computers but definitely for me mac os imac yeah i get some quite extraordinary performance out of this imac when i have 32 gigs of memory installed anyway so to this final sbp um yeah it's a bit of a silly patch really but what i wanted to demonstrate is a couple of well a new module and also the way that i use that new module to mix uh, a piece live and i'm using three clocked modules which are basically all running at different divisions and things um and there's a couple of different uh um swing settings and clock delays basically i'm using all the things that i've demonstrated throughout this episode in one big patch um, and yeah there's like nine touring machines most of which are uh, outputting two different audio tracks um there's what three mixers and uh, a couple of uh sequences running and uh i don't know four eight 12 16 cornrows x is running with uh one two three reverb units and three delay units and well you name it um and all this is running perfectly okay without any glitching on my mac and it's a pretty beefy patch but what i wanted to show you and i'm now going to zoom in so you can see it better is a forthcoming module from impromptu modular Ooh, a little bit of a pause um which has some very unique uh, sort of talents very simple module so what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in on that module and let you see it and then i'm going to perform this patch live whilst using this module so you can see what it can do so this is the new tact module from impromptu modular and this is something that mark boulet and xavier belmont who i've got to say is uh very creative in helping mark and i come up with all these sort of weird ideas for modules and you know xavier does a lot of the design work and the gui stuff and uh this module is basically a automatable voltage changer um, and what that means is you can use it to change voltages over time but in a way of either clicking it or and i have to say this module is still in a very much a work in progress and so it's not feature complete by any means um, but hopefully later you'll be able to send clocks and triggers and gates to it to completely automate um, voltage changes so what would you use those voltage changes for well in this sort of stupidly big patch i'm going to be using it 
to control the volume of each track that's playing. So it's going to be a sort of automated mixing system. Now, I'm using a lot of attenuators here. Again, this is because it's a work in progress and the finished version won't require this. I'm just using them to keep things under control. But fundamentally, what I'm doing here is that each module is set to have a rate of increase or decrease of two seconds per volt. And what that means is for every one of these lights you see, that is actually a one volt increase. And it's a gradual smooth increase between one, you know, zero and one and one and two and two and three and three and four and so on. So it's a gradual, like someone's moving a slider or on a mixing desk. And I'm sending this voltage to the mixing desk, in this case, the console's CV input for its level control, so that when I click anywhere on these sliders, the voltage will go from its previous setting to that setting over a period of time, giving the automated volume changes I'm looking for. And this patch, it again itself, is a very much a work in progress. Um, it's going to be the title patch for an album that I'm working on, and I've no idea when it's going to be ready, so don't ask. Um, but it's going to be a VCV rack only uh, album. It's just something that I've been working on for a couple of months now. And I just want to do a bunch of tracks that only use VCV rack and nothing else. Just do everything within VCV rack. And also, every piece is going to be performed live so that what you hear is a real patch working without any post editing and without any mixing down or anything else other than what I'm doing live in VCV Rack. So let's give this a whirl. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll see. And uh, as I said earlier, thanks guys. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks time for episode 13 of VCV Rack. So here is the title track called Modnar.